Welcome back to our conversation about the law of signs. And what I want to do now is look at an applied problem. And then we're going to talk about how to find the area of an oblique triangle, which is really just having a quick conversation about how to use that particular formula. So that will not take us very long. Let's see what's going on in this word problem. This figure shows a cable car. It's carrying passengers from A to C. Point A is 1.6 miles away from the base of the mountain. Uh, the iPad is on the blank. I think that's round three. We're really making it work this time. We're working. It's working. Here we go. Hopefully it hangs in there. So we're 1.6 miles away from the base of the mountain. We've got the angle of elevation, 22 and 66 respectively. I don't know if the iPad's going to hang with us. What is going on? It might need a longer break than the one that I just gave it. We'll see. We want to determine to the nearest tenth of a foot the distance covered by the cable car. All right. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the 66 degrees. I'm looking at this angle measure that's right in here. Angle ABC, we could subtract from 180 in order to determine that. Uh, determine to the nearest tenth of a distance covered by the cable car. So we're looking for side B first. In order to find side B, we definitely need to know side uh, angle B, so we can figure that out using subtraction, that's good. And then we also need a full pair, which is an angle measure and its corresponding side length. I see the only side length that I have is the 1.6 miles. I don't know the corresponding angle measure, angle C. However, once we find angle measure B, we will be able to determine angle measure C. So the order in which we're going to find things is going to be, we'll find this first, angle ABC. We'll be calling that angle B. And then after that, we will do subtraction in order to find angle C. <clears throat> and then after that, we will have this full pair and this partial pair, and we will solve for side B. And I hear Sophie. Are you coming in? Guess not, doesn't want any part of this. All right, uh, let's do subtraction. If I can get my page to hold still, I've got 180 minus 66, uh, and that is angle B is equal to 180 minus 66, which is 114, 114 degrees. You can write that into your diagram if you like. And then let's also find angle C. C is equal to angle B minus angle A. No, it's not. It's equal to 180 minus angle B minus angle A, which is 180 minus angle B, we just said is 114 degrees, minus angle A, which is 22. You know that I don't trust myself with arithmetic, so here is 180 minus 114 minus 22, that is 44 degrees. Very nice. All right, now we can launch into the law of sines. Now that we have those two values, we're looking for side length B. So I'm going to set up my pair of fractions that are equal to each other so that side B is in the numerator, since that's what I'm looking for. I put my hand down on the screen, and sometimes the screen just jumps. All right, here is side B over the sine of angle B is equal to, and we're using our C values as the full pair. So here is side C divided by the sine of angle C. And the other thing that I just realized is that the instructions told us to find, oh, I went too far, determine to the nearest tenth of a foot the distance covered by the cable car. And this diagram is measured in miles so we need to convert miles to feet, and the multiplier there is 5,280. There are 5,280 feet in a mile. So I'm going to, geez, so sensitive today. 
I'm going to say that size C is equal to 1.6 times, there's a little old school multiplication times there, 5,280. And that is equal to 5,280 times 1.6 equals 8448. 8448 feet. All right, so now let's start filling in some blanks. Side B is the unknown. That's what we're solving for. So we'll leave that up. And we need the sine of angle B, which we determined is 114 degrees, equals side C, we said measured in feet, is 8448, divided by the sine of angle C, which we determined to be 44 degrees. Multiply both sides by the sine of 114 in order to isolate our B value. And we get B is equal to 84, 48 times the sine of 114 degrees, all divided by the sine of 44. And we go into our calculator. I'm going to stick with the grapher for this one. I've got the 8448 is already on my screen, so I'm just going to hit times. Now I've got answer times the sine of 114 degrees, closing my parentheses, divided by the sine of 44 degrees equals, and I got 11,109.96. Double checking my instructions, we're rounding to the nearest tenth of a foot. And that's going to round to the tenths place to a zero. The six from the hundredths place is going to kick the tenths place to a zero, which takes the ones place to a zero and the tens place to a one. And so our rounded value is 11,110.0. That is in feet. Very nice. All right, so that's our B value. And now we want to find A to the nearest tenth of a foot in this oblique triangle. Thankfully, we know angle measure A already, so that's half of that pair. And we can use our C values again, since those are nice round numbers. So let's set that up. We're looking for lowercase a, so that's going in my numerator, divided by the sine of its corresponding angle measure equals, and here's the known pair. We already know both of these values, C and C. Let's plug in what we know. We're solving for a, I don't know that yet divided by the sine of angle measure A, which is 22 degrees, is equal to, we know that C is the 8448, divided by the sine of 44 degrees, that's angle measure C. Multiply both sides this time by the sine of 22 in order to, to find that side length A is equal to 8448 ready a is equal to I've got my 8448 times the sine of 22 closing my parentheses divided by the sine of 44 equals and this time I get 4555.73 which we're going to round to just 0.7 that's the nearest tenth of a foot so 4555 Point seven. And that's also in feet. Part C is asking us to use the right triangle to find the height of the mountain to the nearest tenth of a foot. Let's see what is it going to take to do that. I'm assuming we're looking for lowercase h in our diagram. We want the height of the mountain. And Oh, the good news is now we know the measure of lowercase a, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
If you look at the 66 degree angle measure, side H is opposite that angle measure, and A is the hypotenuse of that dashed triangle that I've colored in green with my highlighter. So opposite divided by hypotenuse, that's the sine function. So the sine of 66 degrees is equal to H over A. Of course, we know what our A value is. So the sine of 66 degrees is equal to H divided by 45, 55.7. Multiply both sides by that value. Terrible. Wish I could write better on this thing. Sine of 66 degrees equals H. And that statement is calculator ready. <clears throat> As it turns out, I've already got the 45, 55.7 on my calculator screen as an exact value. So I'm just leaving that on the screen, hitting the multiplication button, and then sine 66, enter. And I got 41.61.86. We're rounding again to the nearest tenth of a foot, so I'm going 41.61.9. That's pretty tall. And our last topic in this section where we've been talking about the law of signs is suspiciously not anything like the law of signs, except that we're working with an oblique triangle, which does not contain a 90 degree angle. And if we need to find the area of this triangle, I would be willing to bet that there's a conversation we could have where we determine the H value by using the law of signs. We're not going to go through the proof of that process. I just want you to be focusing on the actual tool that we have given to us in this blue box, which helps us find the area depending on the given information. And then we'll see if we can solve this problem using that formula. We wanna find the area of this triangle given this information. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that diagram that they've uh, drawn for us. If I weren't using that diagram, I think the question would be, how would I know how to draw this thing for myself? I think what I would do is draw the same kind of a diagram that we've been drawing uh, all along. I would draw this sort of uh, flat side, which I think of as the ground, and then I would draw my ramp and I really liked it when I was drawing my ramp up here, but this is not a 102 degree angle. If we open that thing up to 102 degrees, it should be going, I've maybe exaggerated it a little bit, but this looks more like angle C here with this being 102 degrees. And if that's angle C, then this side over here is side C. I don't know the measure of that side. And then I think A and B, we can choose those to be whichever ones we want. Here's A and here's B. And then let's maybe fill this in. Uh, C is the hundred and, oops, 102 degrees. And side A can be the 16 and side B can be the 20. So this is a side angle side kind of a situation. We could certainly find, we could solve the rest of this triangle, right? Uh, oh, actually we couldn't because we don't have a full pair. Interesting. Okay, so using the law of signs, we could not solve the rest of this triangle. However, apparently we're gonna be able to find the area. It's one half. Now in this case, we've been given, well, it's two side lengths and an angle measure. And look at this diagram. <coughs> it's two side lengths where the angle measure is between those two side lengths. 
So this needs to be a side angle side scenario in order to use this particular formula in order to find the area of an oblique triangle. So it's one half, the product of the sides, and then the sine of the angle measure. So area equals one half times the 16 times the 20 times the sine of the angle measure between them, which in this case is 102 degrees. This is calculator work that I can be very comfortable doing in my scientific calculator. I'm still gonna do this from right to left. I'm gonna type in the 102. I'm still in degree mode, so I'm good there. I type in the 102, hit the sign button. I've got 0.978, then times 20, times 16, times 0.5 and I got 156.5. Is that a reasonable answer? If the 102 degree angle measure were a 90 degree angle measure, then we would find the area of this triangle by doing one half base times height. And the base would be 20 and the height would be 16. So you've got one half, which is 0.5 times the base, which is 20 times the height, which is 16 would give me a total area of 160. You open up that angle measure a little bit and it kind of makes the triangle look a little bit skinnier. So the area is going to be a little bit smaller. And in this case, it's only uh, 3.5 square units smaller. So it knocked it down to 156.5. You could try doing this problem again where you make C equal to 135 degree angle, maybe 170 degree angle. Let's try it with 180 degree angle, right? What if we opened those 16 and 20 unit long sides and we made that angle 180 degrees? Then this side length right here this side right here is gonna be sort of on the 16 and the 20, right? If we open this up a little bit more to like 135 degrees, then this is our triangle. And if we open it up to 170 degrees, then this is our triangle. The area of that looks really small. And if we open it up to 180 degrees, then this is our triangle and it's not gonna have any area at all. I wonder if that's true. Let's try it with our formula. I've got one half, which is 0.5, times the 16, times the 20. Uh, oh, actually, well, we should do this from right to left. If I'm using my scientific calculator the same way I did before. Here's 180, times, and then I'll hit the sign button. Oh, and I get zero. Times 20, times 16, times 0.5, doesn't matter. Zero times any of those things is zero. So it worked. We got a triangle with an area of zero. For as long as this section was, the fact that I still sound as enthusiastic as I sound is I'm impressing even myself. That's the end of this one. Thank you so much for hanging with me on this topic. Uh, the law of signs is not a complicated tool to use. And the circumstances that you need to have in place in order to use it are also not complicated. You've got a fraction equal to a fraction. You've got two numerators, two denominators. That's four components that you need or that you're gonna be working with at a time. You need three out of four pieces of information. You need a full pair and a half a pair and you solve for whatever's missing. That's like an hour and 40 minute lesson that I was able to just sort of uh, review in about 20 seconds. Okay, the law of signs is that simple. It's the organization and the detail required especially in the ambiguous triangle case, the organization, the patience, the detail, the care that's required in order to solve that thing correctly the first time and not make a little mistake that causes all the rest of your work to be worthless, right? You make a little mistake 20% of the way into that process, the next 80% of the work that you do is just gonna give you a truckload of wrong answers. So you wanna be really careful and put yourself into a, a good environment where it's quiet, 
and you're in a good state of mind to be working through those problems because you got to really get dialed in on those. I think that's the real lesson there and the real transferable skill that you're going to pull out of that out of this lesson. So I hope that's valuable to you and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, the next video, which is undoubtedly about the law of cosines and that'll cover all the rest of the triangle scenarios where we're trying to find missing side lengths and angle measures. I hope you'll join me and if you haven't already subscribed and liked, I would appreciate it. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.